G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, aka Hippo. Today I'm gonna to show you how to get that really cool animated look within After Effects really quickly. To go from something like this, to something that looks a bit more like this. Okay, so we're within After Effects here, and this is the animation that I'm gonna be working with today. It looks fine, clean, colorful, but I think I just wanna elevate it. I just wanna take it to the next level and give it that animated look. All right, so what are we gonna be looking at today? So we're gonna start with our original animation like that. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is texture. So adding that beautiful grainy texture, then frame rate, mimicking animation, and then wiggle and line boil, which is that wiggle you see on the edges. Now, fun little backstory, my use of this method started with just that looping texture method, which I'll show you in a, in, a, in, a, in a second. And then eventually it developed. I learned about posterized time, which I'll talk about in a second, which lets you get that 12 frames per second look or that eight frames per second look. And it just gives you that, that choppy look. I, I was using the texture method, then I was using the posterized time method. And then, special shout out to a friend of mine, Mild Vibe, go check out his stuff on Instagram. He introduced me to this, um, cool effect called turbulent displays. Thanks, bro. Now what turbulent displays does is it gives you that wiggle or line boil look. Now, if you think back to the classic animated days, because of that method of drawing something, you know, eight different times or 12 different times, it's kind of have a slight wiggle. We embrace the imperfection. <laughs> so it's those three things combined that I sort of learned over a certain period of time um, that really started giving me the ability to go from a relatively plain animation, spice it up with some texture, chop up that frame rate to match the old time animation, and then add that wiggle or line boil. Now I wanted to give a special shout out as well because there's a part of this um, turbulent displace method that I've been using, and I'll show you in a second, but I've been doing it one way this whole time. Then I watched a tutorial by Ben Marriott, and if you haven't seen him on YouTube, he's Probably the reason that I started up my YouTube channel again. <laughs> Super inspirational guy. Um, and the work he does is awesome. So go check him out. Okay, so here's my little animated robot guy. It's always satisfying. Look at these little rigging points. Um, and the scene that I've made, it's got this blue background. And this robot monster dude is poking his head up over this hill. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is texture. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways you can achieve this, or rather a couple of different ways you can start. So you can download some free textures online, which is what I'm gonna show you. Um, alternatively, you can take pictures of paper or different textured objects, um, or you can also uh, take a piece of paper and then paint across it and get your own texture, whatever kind of texture you want. Now there's two resources I use most of the time for most of my work, um, pexels.com or Unsplash. And all you need to do in this case is just type in Paper texture, let's see what comes up. Awesome, okay. So the one I'm gonna to use today is this brown one actually. Um, I have used this paper, this crunchy paper one for a couple of things, which I'll show you a bit later. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and download something like that. Uh, that's what I'm gonna start with. You wanna make sure that the grain is quite visible, but this looks pretty cool too. That real sort of um, fiber look. But yeah, this is the one I'm gonna to use today. Okay, so you drag your texture um, into your composition here. Let's rename our texture to texture. Very creative naming. Um, and what you wanna do is scale that down just a little bit, S on your keyboard to show uh, the scale properties. Um, and just scale that down a little bit just to fill your entire composition. So we're gonna do a five frame repetition, okay? So click on your texture layer. Um, and then what you're gonna do is press control on the keyboard and forward arrow. So you're gonna go forward five times. So control, forward, two, three, four, five. And then you're gonna cut that layer. So control shift D or command shift D will cut that layer um, and then move the rest of it up to the next layer. So control shift D has cut that layer. Then I'm gonna go five more frames, okay? So control and forward arrow, one, two, three, four, five and I'm gonna press Command Shift D or Control Shift D again to cut that one. So Control, one, two, three, four, five, split the layer, Control, one, two, three, four, five, split the layer. Now you can do this multiple times. I'm gonna do it five times. Sometimes I do it three times, but to get a good variation of your texture, um, I would just do the mathematical thing. So five frames, 
times five, 25 frames per second. So one, two, three, four, five, let's do one more. Control, one, two, three, four, five, and the forward arrow. And then Control, Shift, D, or Command, Shift, D. And then you can just get rid of that last one. And then what you need to do is introduce some variation, okay? So that texture starts there. So for the next one, let's move the texture over here. And let's just scale it up a little bit. So S for scale. Okay, so first one's there, next one's there. Next one here, I'm gonna move that across that way. So if there's any big things like this coffee stain here, you might wanna avoid that. So I'll just scale up a little bit. Do it like that. Okay, so that's the first frame, that's the next frame, that's the next frame. And this one, I'm gonna right click, transform and flip vertical. It's a nice little trick <laughs> to get some variation. And the last one, I'm gonna do the same, but I'm gonna flip, um, transform, flip horizontal, and then I'm just gonna move it over a little bit in this direction here. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five variations. So what you're gonna do is highlight those five variations, right click and pre-compose, and make sure you move all attributes to the new composition, that will be checked automatically, and name your composition texture, or let's go looping texture. So let's just take a look at that pre-composition. One, two, three, four, five. Five different texture variations at five frames each. So go back to your main composition, right click that looping texture layer, go time and enable time remapping. So what that's done is created a, a time keyframe at the beginning and then at the end point. So it was at one second. So what I want you to do is go to the last keyframe. So you can actually toggle between keyframes by pressing J to go backwards or K to go forwards. Keep in mind if there are other keyframes down your timeline, it'll also jump between those. But in this case, I'm just pressing J and K to jump between those keyframes, super handy. So go to your last keyframe and press control left arrow to go one frame back and then create a new keyframe by pressing the little diamond here next to time remap. Then press K to go one keyframe forward and then press the little diamond to delete that last keyframe. So you've created a new keyframe one frame before the last one and you're deleting that last one. So now we're gonna do a simple little script. So what you need to do is hold Alt and click on the little stopwatch next to time remap. And it's gonna bring up this scary little text box. And all you need to do is type loop and then capital O out. And you'll see the first selection there, loop out, parentheses, parentheses. That's the one you want to so press enter on that and then just click away. And now your little texture composition will loop endlessly across those five frames. Um, you can extend it as far as you want. Um, it'll just keep going. Now, sometimes I do get a little black frame that pops up. Moving that keyframe should fix that, but if not, um, press the continually rasterize button, that's a little star, and just press that. So how do we then overlay this on our animation? I like using multiply. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty cool, looks pretty grungy. <laughs> so what multiply is doing is getting rid of the whiteness or lightness in the image. Screen would get rid of the blackness or darkness in the image. It's another different look you can go for. Um, you can play around with these, there's a lot of cool ones. Overlay is another option. I do like overlay a lot. Actually, I might swap to overlay. <laughs> overlay is probably the one I use the most um, or soft light, which is just a softer version of that. Okay, so let's go with overlay. It looks pretty cool. I want a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna bring in a texture layer that I actually drew within Procreate. So I made a noise layer on my illustration um, and I'm gonna bring that one in. Sky texture, and you can see it's a nice white sort of uh, speckle. Okay, but it's not doing anything. It's just, it's just there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna repeat that method as I just showed you. So every five frames, break that bad boy up with Control Shift D. Okay, so that's five variations at five frames each. Um, and then I'm just gonna go through and add some variation. So that one's in the middle. This one I'm gonna move across to that side. Next one I'm gonna move across to the other side. This one here, I'm gonna right click and flip horizontally. And the next one, don't know what I'm gonna do actually. What did I do for the first one? I'll bring it back. I'll bring it over to, the, to this side. Okay, so there's some nice variation there. 
And again, highlight all of your texture items um, and control shift C to pre-compose or right click and pre-compose. Okay, so select all those texture layers, control shift C to pre-compose and let's call this sky texture. Same method as before, right click, time, enable time remapping. It creates two keyframes. Press K on the keyboard to go to that last keyframe. Go one keyframe back and create a new keyframe. Press K on the keyboard to go forward and delete that last keyframe by pressing the little diamond here or selecting the keyframe and deleting it. Okay, so now we've got the enable time remapping set. So next step, Alt click the little stopwatch next to time remap so that we can add a script. And same script as before, lowercase loop, capital out. And it's the first one there, enter, click away. And now we've got a looping texture. Okay, so now I've added a background texture onto the sky, which really makes that blue pop. Um, and then I've got that paper texture over the top of everything, just to give that rough animated look, it's starting to look pretty cool. Okay, so that's it for the texture component. You can go in and adjust your opacity. So press T on the sky texture and bring that opacity down if you want. Just go by whatever you feel looks good. I think that's in a pretty good spot. Okay, so the next thing we we'll talk about is the frame rate and creating that wiggle or line boil. What you need to do is create a new adjustment layer. So an adjustment layer um, acts as a sort of a spot where you can add effects and it'll affect everything below that layer. Okay, so let's go layer, new adjustment layer. So you can see there, control alt Y or command alt Y is your shortcut to get an adjustment layer. Let's call that animated look. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna pop up there is posterize time. Okay, so remember frame rate, posterize time, pop that into your effects panel, posterize time, that one there, posterize time, and you can drag that onto your animated look layer. Or alternative, you can right click the animated look layer um, and go effect, time, posterize time. Nothing's happening at the moment, so let's go up to your effect controls panel up here, and you can see the frame rate is actually set to 24 already. Let's go to 12 and see what happens. So immediately we get that choppy look, which I think looks awesome. It just takes that edge off. So let's remove it for a second. See what that looks like, super smooth. Okay, and then let's add that choppy look onto it. Looks pretty dang cool. Okay, for shits and giggles, let's go down to eight. Super chop. So depending on your project, you know, decide what you want to do. There is no right answer. You can do what you want. You can stick to 12 like they did or eight or whatever you want. I think this looks cool. I think 12 looks cool. I'll go with 12. All right, so that's your frame rate sorted. So now we're gonna talk about wiggle and boil. So on that same animated look layer, posterize time up here first, I'm gonna put in uh, the next effect which is called turbulent displays. If you can spell turbulent right, that's a good start. <laughs> turbulent displays. Okay, so drag that bad boy onto your animated look layer. Now this one, as you can see, has an immediate effect. Now this looks a bit funky. Now I'll show you the method I used to use, and then I'll show you the one I learned uh, by watching one of Ben Marriott's tutorials, which actually makes this a bit easier. <laughs> um, okay, so you're gonna play with this amount. I'm gonna just take that down to two. Let's see what that looks like, and then size, let's take that down to 20. Okay, so the amount is the amount that it's distorting and the size is the size of the distortion. So you could have big distortion distorted a lot and it might look a bit more wavy or you can have um, a lot of distortion and smaller size and you can have a very tight wiggle along the edges. Um, so let's just see what that looks like. And then come down here to um, evolution. So this is how I used to do it. I used to do an, a keyframe for my evolution option and go from zero up to like 20 or 50 X. Okay. So as you can see, if I play that with the current numbers, which are two and 50, then you get that, you get it. It works, but this is a better method. So undo that, get rid of that keyframe and come down here to evolution options and random seed. And if you, if you move through that, you'll see that the wiggle is actually appearing there. Okay, so you can go in there and change the size of your wiggle and you'll see that's the effect size has. And let's bring that back down to 50 and maybe change amount to, to 10. And you can see that's all a little bit too much, right? So I'll make sure I'll dial it down, amount five. Hmm, 
No, amount two. That looks pretty cool. It looks like a subtle, acceptable spot for this random seed. I'll click the little stopwatch and we're going to make that random seed change every five frames, just like our texture. So the expression you want to put in is time times five. Or if you've got a 24 frames per second um, composition and you're doing four frame variations in your texture, then do times four. So let's go times five, click away. And now that'll just change automatically for you. And if you look closely, you can see it's just got that wiggle and it just makes it look a little bit more handmade. And this is especially cool for like situations where I might want to pretend something's made out of paper. Then you get that scrunched up paper texture and it really looks like you've gone in there and cut out the paper, you know, depending on the use case. It's really just adding a cool, subtle little effect, which if I then zoom out, creates that final look that we were going for. So I showed you how to do those looping textures. I showed you how to get that choppy frame rate using posterized time. And then I added that wiggle or boil uh, with turbulent displays. So I'm gonna add one more thing, and this is up to you. You can add this if you want or not. Right click your animated look layer, come up here to effects, down to noise and grain, and just add some noise. All right, so up in your little noise effects here, don't use color noise, and I'm gonna add about 5% noise. Okay, so what that does, it's just gonna add that little bit of noisiness or grain. You can try the add grain method as well, but that's a little bit more processor intensive. But um, overall, I'm pretty happy with that look. So do not be afraid to experiment with this process. It's not just for animations like this, it's for literally anything. Um, here's an example of a text animation using that same method. Add that choppiness, add the noise, add a slight boil or wiggle. Again, it's just elevating. Um, here's another example where I've got a 3D sphere and I'm just creating some crazy, some crazy stuff. So this one, I've actually colored the texture. Um, and I've, I think I've put two versions of the texture. Yeah, texture one and texture two um, on an Element 3D. Element 3D, who remembers Element 3D? Who still uses Element 3D? I love it. They need a new version. It's not really compatible with um, multi-frame rendering at the moment. Video Copilot, where are you? Last post did was 2019. Andrew Kramer needs to, needs to wake up. That's the beauty about After Effects. There's all these effects. I still, <laughs> I still remember the first day that I opened up After Effects. I was really into filmmaking when I was like 12. No, hang on, 10, 11, 12. That's when it all started. And I remember going like, I need effects. I need effects, After Effects. That's gonna give me effects, right? So I opened up After Effects for the first time. I don't know what version of After Effects it was back in 2003, 2002. <laughs> But I remember opening it up and I was like, there's just, I went to effects and I was like, oh my God, what does all this stuff do? There's too many. And I would put stuff on and it wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't know what, how, how to use it. Um, but that really is the beauty. There's all these things in here. You don't know necessarily what they do at the moment, but just play around with them. And if you grew up watching Andrew Kramer's tutorials, um, you'll know that you'll watch one of his tutorials and he uses some effect and you're like, what? How did you get from that to that? It's really cool. Um, if you haven't checked out his stuff, some of it's a bit dated now, but um, make sure you check it out. So yeah, that's it. Like I said, if you are interested, um, I think I'm gonna do it anyway, but if you're interested, let me know um, if you wanna learn how to rig little characters like this um, from artwork and bring it over into, um, bring it over into After Effects. That's it for today's tutorial. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, or if you'd like to see how I put this animation together in the first place, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to do it next. Thanks guys.